chemistry scholars. This is Mrs. Smith, and I'm going to go through the Charles Law Lab exercise with you today. The first thing you'll need to do is get your flask stoppered and draw a line where the stopper ends. Okay, so at the bottom of the stopper, you will just trace a line around where the stopper ends. Now you need to do this because the, the flask is now full of air, and we will be measuring the volume of that air after we do our experiment. So you'll need to know how high to fill this up with water so that you can know how much air is currently in there. Then you need to hook up your test tube clamp to the neck of the flask and then to your ring stand. At this point you should have some boiling water ready and you're going to submerge your flask all the way as far as you can down into the boiling water. So you see that I don't have quite enough boiling water in here, but you will. What we're going to do now is raise the temperature of the air inside the flask. We will want to know the temperature of the air inside the flask and that should be equal to the temperature of the water in the, in the beaker. So we're gonna take the temperature of the water and that should be the same as the temperature of the air after the time is up. And it says in your lab how long to heat the water and to have the flask in the water bath. When time is up and you've had your flask in the boiling water for the set amount of time, you'll write down the temperature. Always remember to estimate the tenths place on this thermometer. And then this is a two person job, so you'll need two people one person's going to have a hot gripper and hold on to the hot glass flask. The other person is going to plug this hole here. It's important that you have someone plug the hole because you don't want any air escaping or entering the flask during the transfer. Now we're going to cool the air inside the flask by using this cool water bath. So one person will unscrew your test tube clamp. The other person will have their finger over the lid and I'm just going to do the whole thing myself and do this transfer. When you transfer, you want to flip the flask upside down and not release your finger from the hole until the flask is all the way submerged. So I have to get this test tube clamp off. So once the neck of the flask is underwater, then you can release your finger and you want to totally submerge this, but do not tip it over. If you tip this flask upright, water will enter, air will bubble out, and you'll have to start your experiment all over. Please be careful to hold the flask upside down and submerge it in the cool water bath. You can even see that already, from the little bit of heating that I did to the air inside the flask, a little bit of water got sucked up into the flask, and that's what should happen. You should see water being pulled into the flask as the air inside cools. Gases are highly compressible. That means that as the gas particles cool, their speed will slow down and the air particles will take up less space. So the volume of the air inside the flask when it's cool will be less than the volume of the air inside the flask when it's hot. When the time frame has expired for you holding it in the cool water, then you will need to hold the flask so that the water level inside the flask is even with the water level outside of the flask. You need to do this to equalize the pressure inside and outside the flask. So you'll put your finger once again over the hole and you'll flip it over. Now you can see that I have a little bit of water inside my flask and I'm going to need to measure that volume. Pour it into the graduated cylinder, take your measurement, and then you're going to need to fill up this whole flask with water up to the line that you drew at the beginning. That's how much air you had in the flask at the beginning of the experiment when the air was hot. So you'll need to take that measurement. Please make sure that you use the 250 milliliter graduated cylinder if you're going to measure the volume of the whole flask. This one you can probably do with the 100 milliliter or even a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder to measure this little bit of water that got sucked into the flask. I hope that helps you to know what you're doing when you come to lab, and we'll see you soon.